Free. A live podcast sponsored by the Marin Fire History Group. All about the history of the fire service in Marin County, California. And now your host, retired fire chief Bill Lewis. Good day, and welcome to the Marin County Fire Chief's historical website. Today's presentation is about a forgotten piece of our history. It is called the Hooden and Hook and Ladder Apparatus. The history of the fire service and the Hook and Ladder Company. As students of our history, it, I marvel at what we are doing to preserve our past for the next generation of fire service personnel. And in, as buildings got bigger and taller, it became evident that the fire service was going to have to address the ability to reach the upper floors for rescue and onto the roofs for confinement of the fires. As is evident in this 16th, 17th century wood cutting, we can see that the hood, the hook and ladder operation was quite evident. In those days, a ladder was six foot tall. The key element in early American fire suppression was the pike pole. The pike pole goes back, and the hook and ladder goes back to 2,000 years ago in the Roman fire service. In Rome, they had slaves as firefighters. Before they would attempt to rescue or pull a fire down, the owner of the building had to pay the fire service ahead of time. If they weren't paid properly, they would allow the building to burn. But once paid, they would begin to pull the building apart and down with their what we now today would call a pike pole. They also would carry a, lo a long rope with a metal hook to the side that they would throw and hope that people could grab a windowsill and slide down the rope for their own s to safety. In early America, there isn't a community that did not suffer one or two conflagrations based on types of construction. And Jamestown, our first settlement here in the, in the New World, and the Plymouth Plantation in Massachusetts so are just examples of thatched roofs and wooden chimneys. And once a thatched roof took off, and you can see the close proximity to another home, uh, it was quite evident that a, you could lose the entire plantation. So the pike pole's job was to grab a ring at the eve of the building and technically pull the, the fire apart and hope that it did not spread to its neighbor's home. And during the uh, reign of Richard I in 1169, it was the law, and the law stated that people who dwelled in great houses within the ward have a ladder or two ready and prepared to succor their neighbors in the case misadventures should occur from fire. And as you can see on this illustration, the, the ladders of the day were a typical rope with wood between them with a hook, a lance on the second one in from the left is a lance that had a hook. And then we had the little basket made out of the rope that would be lower a person. And then a long rope with a 50 pound weight of lead, drop it to the ground and slide down the rope. And then the first real what you and I would call a ladder is introduced into the 11th uh, century. Ladders are mentioned in our history books as far as 385 AD and in 1828 Parliament was asked to pass a law requiring all engines both steam and or uh, hose to have a ladder and the ladder of the, in those days was only six foot long. The extension ladder is yet to be invented. And by order of the king, a number of things were introduced. One was, let me, I'm sorry, go back. 
here we have the first, the first earliest mentions of a hook and ladder here in the United States was in about 1799 in what is Westchester, Pennsylvania. Uh, they ordered, uh, they show, the records show that they ordered the, what is believed to be probably the first hook and ladder uh, in, in the colonies. And uh, th th so it goes on from there. In this hopper is a weekly magazine, and it's quite evident, evident that there is no ladders involved, not a ladder in sight. In those days, it was quite common that firemen would stand on each other's shoulders, go up, pull each other up to the upper floors, or up onto the roof. So in this 1851 slide uh, cover of the magazine, it's quite evident there is not a ladder in sight. In the, by the 1850s, the hook and ladder apparatus has really taken a foothold in the American uh, fire scene. This is a tip of what we're going to call a, the last edition of the hook and ladder, uh, 1851. This illustrated uh, record of it. So, they're all come. Not every city or every community uh, would have one, but they were quite easily to make because they were just made. The initial ones, as you will see, was just a two wheels and an old hose cart, probably converted into a flat. Uh, platform and ladders were just thrown on top of each other and that would probably would have been hand pulled to the scene and that would have been the community's hook and ladder operation. The hook and ladder comes to Marin County in December the 5th 1874. San Rafael came to be called themselves the San Rafael Hose Company at number one but changed it to read San Rafael Hose Hook and Ladder Company. And they put it the word the hook and ladder came initially the first fire service in Marin County in 1874. What you see in the background is one of San Rafael's last hook and ladder companies. Only less than a month or so after they were formed, they ordered a, a what is called a hook and ladder company uh, from the Marin Carriage Manufacturing. And as you can see, uh, it, in those days, that was $375, and that was a lot of money in, in 1874. That particular piece of equipment would have carried the following. One rope and hook, to be thrown up and hope someone would grab a ledge or a window ledge so they could lower themselves. Two pipe poles for pulling and tearing down the building. Five axes. Six ladders of various lengths. Probably in this case, the longest ladder would probably be in the area of 24 feet. 18 buckets, each carrying three gallons of water. And it would take a crew of 13 men to pull this to the scene. It would be about 20 years later before the San Rafael would get its second truck two, uh, the long one, and it, as you can see, it cost $950. The, if the fire department had to convince the, the city council to, to buy this because the old one was old and it was 20 years old and, and the buildings were getting bigger and bigger, requiring longer and taller ladders. So this particular piece of apparatus You'd have a 35-foot extension ladder, a 120-foot and 16-foot ladder, a 12-foot roof ladder with the hooks on the end for grabbing the, the eave, 12 buckets, four hooks, and what is called a pull-down outfit. I am assuming that was the pike poles and for grabbing and tearing the building down. Here's an example of ladder number two fighting a fire on 4th Street in around uh, 1912. And uh, it's quite evident that the ladders do reach the roof of this uh, two-story building with firefighters up on top and the citizens surround and marveled at their bravery and heroism at the time. But trouble comes to the Mission City, um, you know, every apparatus eventually will have some type of uh, accident. And in the case with the hook and ladders, it was uh, happened a couple times. 
I realized this is a very lengthy piece of uh, reading, so I just kind of highlighted what happened was the uh, the firemen could not reach the roof, so it, and the ladders did not reach the the roof. So what they did is they put their ladders on top of the first story awning, and when they did, got up on the awning to start climbing to the roof, the awning let go, and when it let go, a number of firemen fell 15 feet to the concrete below. Uh, all kinds of various injuries occurred. So that was a typical case, uh, about eight, uh, 21. Here's one when the, uh, the, the hook and ladder was uh, pulled to the scene. When you read this, you'll see the hook and ladder is pulled to the scene by what is called an expressman. He was somebody in the community who would rent his horses out and pull these uh, new equipments. Uh, hose carts and uh, hook and ladders to the scene for a cost and uh, he would run hear the fire bell bring the horses down grab the, the hook and ladder and take off as he was crossing the railroad tracks the uh, and it's full of men as you can see it's quite long and so a lot of people could ride on this hook and ladder he dropped a wheel the wheel wheel broke and uh, again 12 uh, Eight to ten firemen were riding in the apparatus and were thrown 12 feet in the air, and they all suffered minor injuries. So with every piece of equipment of injury, you have accidents, and this is two predominant ones that you'll find in our history. So it, it's, uh, it's there, but it was a great piece of invention by the fire service. It was something that was needed, and they came like we always do. We met the need, and we came up with Sausalito is the first, other than San Rafael, Sausalito Fire Department is the first city to mention its purchasing of a hook and ladder. They would negotiate with the San, uh, San Francisco Fire Department, who had, at this time, probably had 15 or 16 hook and ladders throughout the city, and would try to sell their older ones to places like Marin County's new up and up and coming volunteers. So Sausalito was always negotiating with the city to buy their older equipment. And uh, so in this case here, they used a, a Gage Babcock and uh, bought a hook and ladders and placed them like they did the host guards in various locations at one end of town to the other end of town, up in the hills, so the volunteers could reach them without coming down to the main street and pulling them back up. So they were scattered throughout the community, which is the right way to, to do it back in 1909 in Sausalito. Uh, Kinfield and Larkspur uh, mentioned in their records that they had a hook and ladder, and, uh, but there was no evidence of it and no photographic evidence or paper evidence other than uh, just quick articles that we had it. The next city to uh, get a, a classy hook and ladder is San Anselmo. In 1909, just about the time the the real f first fire station in San Anselmo was built, um, they, the chief Cartwright convinced the, the city council to purchase a chemical 40-gallon chemical wagon with a hook and ladder. The combination cost $9,000, and in 1909, $9,000 was a tremendous amount of money. If you do the conversion sometime on online, you'll see how much money that's equated to today. The uh, the two horses, Colonel and Major, uh, were well trained, and one of the funny things about this, I, that the horses that were going to pull fire apparatus had to be UL certified that they could be fire horses, and uh, so was the case, and the chief was so convinced that these horses were so well trained, said the only thing they couldn't do was talk, and I guess they were signing them up for language lessons. There, but they were two good horses that uh, when they bought their first chemical engine a few years down the road, these two animals were allowed to spend the rest of their life in green pastures. But San Anselmo had a, a horse-drawn chemical and hook and ladder company in 1909. A new position would enter the fire service uh, a nomenclature, and that's the Tillerman. But as the hook and ladders became so long, it was required someone in the rear of the apparatus to steer around the narrow streets and corners and, and in the uh, early days. So the Tillerman is still, uh, is still active in a lot of communities throughout America. We still have apparatus that have Tillerman. 
and uh, San, San Rosa is one that I know of other than the city of course has a, a Tillman uh, apparatus but it was qu quite common in those days but so we was just going to quick as I told you it was going to be a quick uh, overlook of the hook and ladder here in uh, Rin County and we just want to kind of say farewell to the, this petite, particular piece of apparatus it was a, a great invention. It, it served its time and did quite well. And now it's only find it on the, the dusty pages of our history book. So uh, with that said, I would like to take a moment to thank a, an individual who I've been using some of his photographs. A gentleman by the name of Jack O'Sullivan. Jack is a longtime fire uh, volunteer advocate, uh, worked for PG&E, simply uh, recently retired from PG&E and uh, lives in Petaluma, but I've known Jack ever since he was a, a young teenager uh, going through the College of Marine program, and he uh, has a well, uh, a great collection of Marine County uh, old fire apparatus, and if you would l maybe like, a, I don't know what, what we have, but if you would like a copy of what we have of your department, uh, give us a jingle and I'll see what we can get to you. So with that said, I will ask our great uh, with director, if he has any questions or comments on this program. Well, it's funny you should mention that. First of all, I just put the email address up on the screen so that they can reach out to you if need be. Second of all, I do have a question. Someone seriously wants to ask the chief. Roz from Australia, and Bill, I'm not making this up. Roz from Australia wants to know how Sausalito is doing. Now that may sound funny. Let me read Roz's message. She says, hello, we are visiting San Francisco in August of 2020 from Australia. I visited Sausalito many years ago and absolutely loved it. Was the area devastated by the fires? And what is the impact that it has had it has always been such a pretty area. Thanks for your help. Kind regards, Roz. Are you, oh great one, able to help Roz out and uh, perhaps tell her how things are today in Sausalito? Mm -hmm. Well, uh, Roz, thank you for your uh, question. And uh, our, uh, uh, our love and our attention goes through as you people that are in Australia and what is, you're undergoing now at the time of this recording. Australia has, it, it's in its fire service and it's probably the worst fire service in the history of the nation. So with that, uh, we wish you all the best. Getting to Sausalito. Sausalito is very fortunate. Uh, the wildland fires had very little impact this last year. Uh, in Marin County, in Sausalito, was uh, was saved from many uh, fires. Um, uh, most of the fires happened uh, north of us and other Sonoma and Mendocino counties, but Sausalito still is its beautiful self, as you remember. Um, we're hoping that you enjoy your visit. We want you to contact the Sausalito Fire Department and the Fire Chief. Uh, they have a beautiful new uh, fire station downtown Sausalito with a lot of historical uh, photos and so forth that I think you might enjoy. So, Ross, please, we will tell you how to get a hold of the Sa Saucedo Fire Chief, and you can arrange for a uh, a walk through their station. I'm a, I would assume they will just enjoy uh, showing off their beautiful station. And any other questions, sir? No, we have no other questions today, sir. All right, I thank you, and I wish you all well, and I'll be safe out there. Until next time, this is Bill Lawless saying goodbye. Mm -hmm.